Hi everyone. Oh, hi everyone. Um, so the next topic would be R med and loaded using R on OpenShift. Um, oh, thank you. Um, and over to Ricardo. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So. <clears throat> All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here at DevConf. Um, I had the opportunity to go to the latest two DevConf in Bruno, and I think it's a very good conference to share some experience with developers for other areas, and I'm, I'm very glad to be here. So speaking about experience, um, what I'm going to show is a bit of my experience, uh, a few of my experience with data visualization and data manipulation, and a bit of my personal initiative to bring R on OpenShift. So let's get started. Well, um, I think most of you know what R language is, but for those who didn't understand what R language does, well, R is a language that, believe it or not, it's a 25 years language, so it's pretty old, and its main utility for for the language is data manipulation, calculation, and graph case display. So it's very useful now they're talking about um, big data and machine learning. We're talking about using R for statistics, data exploration, data visualization, and machine learning. Well, I personally love the language, but why would someone use R for data manipulation? Well, um, R is a very useful language, not only for software developers, but those who are not software developers can use R too. It's a language with, with a very easy syntax, and not only that, there are many libraries that covers many, many applications, and you can download the, the libraries through CRAN. CRAN stands for the Comprehensible R, um, Comprehensible R Archive Network. And well, particularly, I'm trying to find the comprehensible in the CRAN, but it's just a personal opinion. Um, however, uh, be careful when you try to load a huge amount of data because R uh, uses in-memory uh, calculation, so be careful if you have a huge data set to manipulate. It's not recommended for this kind of situation. All right, just to show a little bit about um, how easy is R for data manipulation, I'll start a R session here. So uh, this is the R prompt. It's like a, a bash. You can run comments in here. So I'll start reading a CSV file. Um, and as you can see, I have type completion, not only for comments, but for paths. So I'll use the US election CSV. And as I want to handle this data, I'll put in a variable. All right, so now I can take the first, the first six lines of this data. I can check the latest six too. I can, with summary command, I can look at um, a little bit about, about my data, like for example, a, I have a total votes 2008. Uh, it's a number column, so I have some some measurements of the data distribution, like minimum, maximum, the quartiles, mean, median, and in case of a text column, like for example, county name, I will have the 
the frequency of each word inside my data set. Um, as I said, R is for uh, statistics, so I can also calculate the standard deviation of, for example, um, total votes 2008, so it's 52420.69. And what else? Well, I can also plot the data. So let me try plot the, the distribution of total votes for 2008. And I have a very simple graph to show the spread of my data. All right. So what about companies? How many companies are using R today? Well, there's Facebook for behavior analysis. They use a lot of it in their um, related to status updates and profile pictures. Uh, Google uses for advertising, Twitter for data visualization. Um, Microsoft and IBM are part of the R consortium. It's a special group who maintains the R foundation. Um, Uber for statistical analysis, Airbnb, ANZ, and so on. Uh, the search for the list of those companies is below. And what else do we have for R? Well, as I said, R is has a, an extensible repository of libraries. And one of the things makes R very good is to create uh, quick data visualizations around your data. And in particular, there's a special library called Shiny, which is a very useful library to create dashboards in, in a web application style. So you can use, just let me show the Shiny web page. So you can create dashboards using your data. You can create some visualizations, create some interactions with it, and using some of the standard components from Shiny. And you can also um, change the style using CSS, themes, and so on. So R as a dashboard is a very good, uh, in my opinion, is a very good uh, is a very good option to make quick visualizations and to publish in a web application style. All right, so now we know what R is. Let's talk about a little bit about cloud and containers. So we have and currently uh, this boom of using cloud computing and containers and most of the requirements of the motivations around that is mostly because of the what NIST define it as a cloud computing. So they elected five requirements for cloud, which is self-service on-demand resources, broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, and measured service. So everything we didn't have in standard data center style uh, architectures, we have in cloud mostly because there's the biggest motivations around the, the technology itself. All right. And why I chose OpenShift to run R? Well, um, I, I've been using OpenShift since the alpha version, maybe, well, four, four, four and a half years ago. And one of the things that makes, in my opinion, OpenShift very, a very good platform is that it's a, a developer-friendly environment. You can, with just single clicks, you can publish your application and you have a, a DNS name for you to access externally. Um, you can also have some pipelines so you can um, divide your, uh, split your workflow in, in stages where you can test and deploy your application in production. And you now with OpenShift P3, you have all the 
capabilities to create uh, microservices style for your applications. All right, so mixing cloud computing and R uh, makes the image which is published and available through the redanalytics.io project. It's um, a project aimed to bring some machine learning and big data capabilities to OpenShift. And we have the Apache Spark as the central component of it. It's um, one of the biggest projects coming in the big data area. It's a very useful tool to make uh, large scale computing uh, around your data. And R is around this, this language supported by Spark. We have also Java, Scala, and Python. So, and R in OpenShift offer also the S2I style um, workflow to build your application. So for those who doesn't know what S2I is, uh, S2I is the standard workflow in OpenShift to create your, your own application image just by just providing the base image and the source code in a Git repository. And R, the R image has also its own dependency management. Well, although we have the CRAN repository, which has all the libraries um, stored for R, we have this problem that we don't have a way to provide a, meta, a metadata where you can just tell the, the dependencies of your application. So this is one of the challenges I did in the R image, so I needed to create my own uh, dependency management mechanism using a, a kind of a metadata file in a, a very simple text file. All right, so let me just show a quick demo with the R image. So this is my repository where I started my, my Shiny application. And this thing I would like to bring some more attention is the .r libraries file. What does that file mean? Well, this is the, the file I told in the last slide about the, that, that makes the dependency management mechanism working in the R image. So as you can see, it's just a very simple file with um, each line uh, mentioning the, the name of the libraries required to build your application, your R application. And this is honestly the only, only difference on or, or the only capability I, I created for to make S2I works for OpenShift. So we have also the main entry points, the app.r, which cre uh, calls the server and UI. It's the front and back end for Shiny application. I'm using some custom CSS and, J and JavaScript file. And in this example, I stored my data files inside my repository, but I could also use an external storage to load the data. Well, yeah, I think this is basically what I have in my repository. So going back to OpenShift, this is my project where I have the uh, the U.S. elections data set, which contains the um, the, la the last three elections data, um, the number of voters of each county for the last three elections. All right. So this is the visualization. One second. Okay. So I created a GeoJSON file with all the county limits, and then I merged the, 
U.S. elections data inside this GeoJSON file. So what, what you're seeing here is the map of the U.S. divided by the counties and the color says the number of voters of each county. And there are many parts with the same color. Uh, the problem in this data set is that most data, uh, most the data is below 400 number, uh, four, uh, 400, 4,000 voters. So most of the counties are with the same color because of that. But you have also, like for example, let me check another one, like here. Nope. There are some counties here with more than 10,000. Maybe here, yeah. This, these are just very few number of voters. But as you can see, if you point to the county, you can see the number of the county and, and the name of the county and the number of voters in that county specifically. Also, I created a very simple page to explore the data. So there's a table here with the state name, county name, the party where which received the votes and the number of votes of each election. So for 2008, 2012, and 2016. I used the shiny components to create a very simple filter so I can look at the Massachusetts state and Essex County and I have only the the data related to the, this state and county. You can also use the other filter here. So like for example, E6, right? And it shows all the occurrences around the, the data. Okay, lastly, I have this other visualization which is a bar graph with the votes by state in the 2008 elections, but I can also choose the 2016. So the data changes as I'm changing the parameters. And I have a, che a checkbox to color the votes by party. So these are what the colors do. And there's the legend of the, the graph here. All right, so this is a very simple dashboard I created with the US elections data. This is just a um, demonstration of the R capabilities for our image inside OpenShift. And uh, I know that there are lots of improvements I need to put that, like for example, I'm. I'm going to prepare more the base STY image to support machine learning features. Maybe um, need to, to do some more research like GPU scheduling, uh, add full Apache Spark support. I know uh, there there is a, a support for Spark VR, but I like to also add the Spark car, uh, improve build times because the CRAN. Uh, our, the CRAN repository only stores the source code for each library and the process is basically downloads the source code and compile the, the whole source inside your image, your container, and that makes the, the build times, like for example in the US election application, it takes about 60 minutes. So I'll try to come up with a better way to improve the build times. Also, uh, I have only the image streams for R, so I'm going to create some templates to um, fast creating applications using R and try to find a better way to handle dependency management. All right, so that's all I have so far. So. Um, before I finish the, the, the talk, I'd like to thank everyone who attended the, 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 this talk. 
Um, it's my first time talking about R, so I was a bit nervous. So if I, if anyone have any questions, feel free to ask. Hey, uh, thanks, Ricardo. That was really nice. Um, when you were showing the the REPL, uh, the the R um, interface that you had, one of the commands you ran was like a summary, and it showed statistics about the various uh, information oh, in your data. The R prompt, you were saying. Yeah, yeah, the R prompt. Yeah. So, can in that summary, can you actually index each one of those pieces of information to pull it out programmatically? Could you like, if you wanted some of that information? Uh, I don't think I follow your question. I, well, like, could, you, I, could I run the summary command and then say I want the top entry for county name, or would I have to run a different query to do that? Like, would I ever use the summary in my in my application? Well, let me see if I understood because you're saying a, a little far from the microphone. And I'm not oh, hearing you. Um, so the whoa. So the, summar the summary, would you ever use this command inside an application to get the summary data? So if I understand your question, the summary, if, if it's kind of part of my application, is that? W would you use it in an application? Oh, OK. Right. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, as Summary uh, and some other commands I ran here is just um, commands to do some data exploration. But you can also um, you have other commands to, to build applications. But the, the idea behind some of these base commands is to have a very quick uh, inside about your data. So, for example, the summary is just a base command to know what your data is, how how is your data. Um, like, for example, if as, as R is mostly used in statistical uh, calculations, summary usually brings uh, all the statistical data around your data. You, I, I'm doing uh, with all the data set, but I can also choose some specific column, like for example, which is better. Also, and this I need to use a special library called GPlayer. It's kind of a advanced data manipulation tool, but I can also use, like for example, um, do you know in shell you'll have the pipe command where you just get the output of one command and pass as the input of the other command? We had the same in GPlayer, but it's not the pipe, it's this strength symbol, which they call the pipe. But you can also, with election data, you can filter by total votes in 2008 below 4,000. And we have the data. Let's just do another thing. Oh, sorry. So, with the output of that command, I would like to select only the total votes in 2018. And with the output of that command, you can also use a box plot. And there it is. So what I did is just, uh, if I use the, the same command using the raw data, it will be a, a very difficult uh, box plot visualization to see because of the outliers. But then what I did is just, I filter the data to, to get the, the data below 4,000. And then I selected all, only the, 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 the column I like to visualize. And then I call the box plot just in a single pipeline, you know? So all these commands are mostly used to get some data exploration. And Shiny could be useful to create all the visualizations to publish in a web page style. So.
Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. Cool. Hi, um, can you hear me? A little bit. Uh, about now. Okay. Um, so when you start by saying um, this tool is easy, this is easy, it's not from for developers. Uh, you don't have to be a developer to learn it. You were talking to me. So how? A few questions. You, you use a, a, a comma separated uh, CSV file. Do you have to uh, format that in any particular way to get it? the way, uh, um, does it have to be formatted in a specific way for R, or is it just any CSV file, number one? No, it can be any CSV file. Actually, CSV file is just uh, one of the sources I could use, but um, I, I was um, handling another data set for um, atmospheric data, for example. They have a special format called NetCDF. It's a binary data, so it's very hard to use in um, in standard text ed editors. But I know that there's a library inside R called RNetCDF, which you can read the NetCDF data, and then I created another, uh, I created a, a function to read the NetCDF data and export to CSV. But it can be whatever CSV, as well as have separators. And you don't need to have the, the first line as the column names, but you need to specify you don't need col uh, the first line as a column name. You can also have the row names, but you need to specify if you need or not to read the first column as the row name. So and, and there are lots of options to, to read it. And, and any CSV data. Not only CSV data, but every other format that could contain data. I'm intrigued by this because I just had a, a project where I had CSV files all over the place and I had to use grep, set, awk to just kind of get what I needed and, and print out what I needed. And this our language, as you presented it, looked like it would have been great if I knew it two weeks ago. <laughs> so for a newbie, how much effort would you say it takes to get to a point where you can create reports or something like what you just showed today? Thank you. Well, I'm going to finish that R session and I'll start again. Can you see that there, that last paragraph? You can see there are two uh, very helpful commands. There's the demo command, where there, there's another, uh, there's a list of very simple use cases to use R, and there's the help for the online help. So when you type help, it will open a very simple HTTP server and export, uh, it open your web browser with all the online documentation for R. There's also some very um, beginner R tutorials. So it's, for me, if I would uh, begin learn R, I would start with one of these two commands. All right. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending today. And we hope to see you tomorrow.